Hi, I'm Mariana. Uh, I work at LabCode Software Studio in Recife. Those are the great people that work with me. Uh, I, as I have a pretty different name, that's my nickname everywhere, so anywhere you're going to find me with Mari Bedran. So, I'm from Brazil. I am come from this town right there, Niterói, near Rio de Janeiro. They say the best thing about Niterói is the view from Rio. And, well, it's probably true, because... Good? Yeah. I think I got all the technical problems from the conference, so if other speakers can be okay, they, nothing gonna happen to you. So, well, then I come from Niterói, that little city around there in Rio. I recently moved to Recife, that's up there north. Both very beautiful places. If you ever come to Brazil, come visit us. Lots of beaches and uh, warm and music, great places. So then uh, that's me, and let's talk about why I came here. So uh, you know when you go to Django documentation and you go through the ORAM stuff, and all of those pages you never get to. Well, I used to look at them and say, hmm, never used those stuff. Let's make uh, a talk to talk about them and learn them on the way. That's my biggest motivation to be here, have a reason to learn all those things I didn't know about. Then, uh, yeah, I just wanted to test all of those things I only saw on the documentation and never got to use. Uh, so, well, I, a while ago, I worked at a, in, on a PHP pro project, a legacy PHP project, terrible. But the good thing about it is that I, we, as we had to just write raw SQL all the time, I ended up learning some interesting SQL stuff. And uh, at some point, I got to a place where I could implement some things in SQL directly that I had, had no idea how to do in Django. So I was, I've been wondering for a long time, well, how do I get those things to get things together, how do I implement the things I already know in SQL with the ORM, because while well, we're writing Django software, we want to use Django. So could I put the two of them together? Uh, and when would be the good situation to have that knowledge to use those things? Well. Uh, you know, in Django documentation has a whole section about uh, improving your queries, so about uh, optimization strategies. So, well, you've already added indexes to your tables. You have already paginated your requests. You have added select related and prefetch related to your query sets. Uh, you have tried using values, values list only, defer on your query sets. Uh, as you might know, all of those are methods that reduce the number of columns they, we get from the database. Uh, you have set up your database cache. Uh, you can use assert num queries on your methods, 
on your tests to guarantee that you're not doing extra queries that you don't have to. You have done all of that, but still, sometimes that's not enough, and we still have to improve our database queries. So how do we do that? There are some interesting tricks uh, that we could use. So how did I choose to organize it? Choose a big data set, because, well, I, can't, I could just try to implement code on fake data, but then I wouldn't get the real feel of knowing if what I was doing was actually working or it was just pretty code. So I wanted to have real data. Then I would come up with some interesting questions and try to answer that questions using those methods I'd never got to use. Not all of that came as I expected to. So, well, but from the beginning, I just took too long to start it. That was my biggest problem. And while dealing with real data uh, means that you don't have the perfect data. So if you, the data wasn't created with Django, it's a great chance that it's not going to be perfect for your Django models. So I had to validate the data while importing it. And my machine, well, as you can see, uh, it's not a <laughs> very great one. So uh, I had to create an importing script that at the same time didn't kill my machine, consuming all of its memory, and I like it killed my machine hundreds of times. I was just got used to rebooting it all the time. And at the same time, didn't take forever to import all the data. I was already using book create, and it's still like I was creating 100,000 entries each time, and it was still not enough to, impl to import all of, of the sun. So, and then, well, after I had the data, Turns out that putting all of these things together are not quite easy. So when you look at the documentation, everything looks pretty simple. But when you try to put it together with real data, then, well, things get a little bit scarier. But in, in the end, I got some results I want to show you. So what's the data I'm going to talk about? Uh, open data from Brazil. We have a law in Brazil that says that all public data must be available. Uh, there's an information access bill. Uh, but what's the problem with that? In real life, things don't work that well. Uh, though the data is there, it's not that accessible. So not every government agency complies. Sometimes you, people have to go to justice to get the data. Uh, well, each government agency has its own data, so you have to like run around asking each one of them. Uh, they're not always in open format, so some of them provide the data in PDFs or such things. And the biggest problem is that, while well, people that could benefit from, from the data don't have the technical skills to, to analyze it, to get it. Then uh, a, pro, a friend of mine called Avalu, he has a great project, Brazil AU, to gather all this data and make it available, clean it, and so that people can go to a single source and get clean data so they can analyze it. Then, well, as I was preparing my talk, I asked Alvaro, well, do you have any interesting data for me so I could, like, use on my talk? He provided me with some nice data, data sets. I chose some of them, and, like, why not 
prepare a talk, and then, in the end, come up with a new, nice database that could be used somewhere else to like give something interesting to other people. Then, well, I chose two data sets. Uh, one of them is from all the partners from companies in Brazil. Uh, it contains basically the CNPG, that's a unique ind identifier for companies. The partner's name, the category of the partners, if it's a legal entity, if it's a natural person, or it's a foreigner. The pet partnership category, there are many of them. And the partners, CNPJ, or it means if the, the partner is a company, then I, we have the number identifying the company that owns that other company. That's one that is set, and it became those tables. So I have a partnership uh, table that relates com companies to their partners. So the company can have a foreign partner, a natural personal partner, or another company as a partner. And they all belong to states. Then uh, another data set is the Chamber of Deputies uh, expenses. So we have a na national congress. Each deputy has the right to spend a certain of amount of money on their activities. Uh, and the data set describes how they spent that money. So I have a unique identifier for the deputies, the party, uh, the, his name, the date, the reference for the month and year, the amount, description, and the company they spend the money on, and some other fields. Okay. And those become my tables. Oh, I, can, I have an expense. It's related to a deputy. The deputy is related to a party and a state, and the expense can be related to a company that can, by its turn, be related to a state, too. Good. And then let's go to the interesting part, the queries. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is prefectural bit. I just discovered it like two months ago, and it like changed my life. I've been using them at work uh, for retri retrieving related objects uh, given a certain context. Uh, I'm specifically using that on a project right now where we have like a small system for us to control the finances of the company uh, so that Fernando can pay the other partners their salaries. So when we retrieve the data from a user, we want all the related data from that user. So how much time he worked on that month, uh, the expenses he had on that month, uh, the days he didn't work, etc. So we have an API. I get the user's information from that API and all the related data. Well, but when I get all the related data from a user, I don't want the data from last year. That doesn't interest me. So I have an app that uh, calculates the salary for a month. So I only, the only thing that interests me is the data in the context of that specific month. So the best way I found out until now to get those related data in a context is with the prefetch objects. And so in our case here with the data I presented to you, how would we do that? Imagine we have a serializer, pretty simple model serializer. I want to describe the deputy, all of his fields, with the depth of two. That means I go one, two levels of relations from that model, OK? So then I create a list view to list all my deputies. Uh, what would we do normally on a query set? I get a select related to get all the, the party to which this deputy belongs to, the state where he was elected from, 
with the select related. So then this select related will create uh, joins uh, with on statement on the da database. And then the prefetch related will create another query that will get all the expenses uh, filtered by the deputies' IDs. OK. That's what you need to show related models. But then I would get all the deputies and all the expenses from my database. And it would be a huge query. I don't want all of the data. So how would I do to get all, only the data specific to a context? So I'm going to refactor my view to, well, first I'm going to set a month and a year as a default parameter. So you're only allowed to get data from a year, uh, from a month. OK. Then I get uh, first my uh, deputies query, query set. So I get all my deputies on, and all the parties and, and states related to it. I set the default month and year. And then what I do is, uh, there's a last line missing there, but I think it's OK. Uh, so I'm going to get all of the query parameters that the user passed to me and pass to that, uh, to that method called prefetch expenses. Uh, I'm going to, like, you should never do that in real life. Don't get the query parameters from your user and just put them in on your model. That's just, for example, you, you would normally use Django filter or something like that. I just created that method here to show how it would work. So I get all those filters, pass them directly to, to my query set, and that's when I prefetch the data. So. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit unformatted here, but it's OK. Well, the prefetch object uh, creates a prefetch for me. So instead of prefetching by the related name, I prefetch with a prefetch object, object and I pass a query for that prefetch object. So I will filter all the expenses by the pa parameters I got. And after this, uh, the expenses are filtered, I, pa I pass them as a prefect. That means when my user types in that he wants all the deputies, and he wants all the deputies with his, their expenses on the month Third, on the third month of 2018, and they want the, the expenses that was that are bigger than uh, 100. Instead of each deputy with all the expenses from four years ago, I only get the expenses that match that exact uh, parameter. So it creates a single query. I only fetch the data I have. I never had to once uh, make a, a loop over the data. I just retrieve them directly from the database exactly the way I want them to be. So that's the first use, useful thing I've discovered recently. Then second thing and was very funny to do. Uh, we can filter aggregates. I uh, didn't know that like before I was planning that talk. So, uh, you know, Django aggregate functions, we can sum, we can average, we have max variance, standard deviation, we have lots of aggregate functions. But we can also aggregate on filtered things. So I'm going to annotate all of my deputies 
and I want a field on my deputy object that says uh, which was how much did he spend on a month and a year. So, have you used f f strings? I love f strings. I'm like using them everywhere. Love them. Just beautiful. So. I'm going to annotate my deputy with a field with the expenses of a particular month. How am I going to do that? I'm going to use the sum, that's the aggregate expression, everybody knows. And that I can then fill, filter that sum. So instead of summing up all the values, whoa, already? No. Uh, instead of summing the values of all of the expenses, I'm going to just sum the ones that match my future. So I get the sum of a specific field. Uh, and when you look at the query they make, they make a filter on that sum expression uh, with a join on the expenses. Okay? Well, that does alter the filtered relations. They can do the same thing, not that beautiful, but they do the, almost the same thing. I can get a filtered relation. It's the same thing. I'm going to get my deputies. Uh, I'm going to filter the expenses, use the same condition. As you see, the condition is basically the same one. Filter them by month and year. I'm going to then create a first annotation of that that says uh, all the expenses that were made in that month and year. And then I'm going to do a second annotate that's going to sum up all of them. Okay? They both do the same things, but if you look at the query they make, the conditions of month and year, instead of appearing on a filter, like here they appear inside that where statement, and here they appear inside the on condition. What's the difference? Performance. That's the first query. Uh, I don't really understand all of the things they do around there, but the main thing is the number up here. Uh, it shows how efficient the query is. That's the first one, and that's the second one. It's incredibly faster. Like, they do basically the same thing. Instead of filtering here and here, but the fact that this, the filter is on an on condition makes a huge difference. So the code is not that beautiful. Like, when you look at it, it's like, bigger and has a strange thing in the middle, but makes a big difference in real life. Uh, and you can also aggregate uh, annotations. That's also great. So I did the same annotation as before, but with a bit a, with a but for all the months from 2009 to 2018. Gonna do the same annotation, so I'm gonna have a, a spend for month annotated for each deputy, and then I can aggregate those annotations. So each deputy would, will have a field that says how much he spent on a specific month, uh, and then I can do the average of that sum. So the, that field that says gastos year month will be aggregated. So each deputy will have an attribute for each month in the last lots of months. Uh, and I'm going to calculate the average for each one of those. We end up with a huge dictionary, and we could also use those to build graphs. PyPlot is beautiful. We don't know 
what would, would I use that, that thing for, but if someone is interested in how they vary their, ex their expenses, like with two, three Python methods, I got this beautiful plot. That, okay. And the nicest thing, subqueries. I've always wondered how to do that in Django, and now we can do it for two versions. So I want to know uh, which deputies have companies. We cannot do know that for sure, because I don't have any unique identifier for people. Uh, the only way to identify them is by the name, so that's not very accurate. They, well, there, there can be people with the same names. But anyway, I'm gonna, I wanted to like, at least know which deputies have, could have companies in their names. So I make a query uh, on the companies, and I want to know uh, which companies have partnerships that belong to natural people, uh, and I want to know the name of the people that own these companies, and I want to compare that name to something else. What's that something else? A reference to the query that's outside of it. That's how we use the outref. So the documentation uh, normally shows you how to use the outref with uh, primary keys, but what's the fun in using primary keys? We already have the relationships. We can use reference to any keys, so I use the reference to a name. So I have companies, the partnerships they have, the name of their partners, and I want to compare them with the names that appear in the query that's outside of it. And I want to compare the states they're in. So it's probably, like, as I don't have the, uh, any unique identifier, I want to know if they belong to the same state. So I do the same thing with the state. I make a re reference to the query that's outside of it, uh, so they match. And we can annotate that, and I discovered, I think I forgot to put here, I discovered that one-tenth of the, our deputies have probably companies on, in their names. Uh, and that's the query they make, so it's basically a select on the companies table with uh, joins to the partnerships. Then uh, we can reference the columns from the inner query uh, and the outer query. Uh, then I think, yeah, I think that's it. I hope you get something from it.